In this episode of How to Invest in Real Estate, we're going to be talking about a choice called open storage. And this is about storing things out underneath the stars and the moon and the sun and charging for it. In this episode, we're talking about open storage and the questions are, who needs open storage? Where's the market? Where does open storage work best? And then I'm gonna talk to you about the number one reason real estate investors bring open storage into their strategies. The number one reason, and it's not what you're thinking. So when we're thinking about who needs open storage, hey, just remember this. We live in the United States of America. We collect stuff like nobody's ever seen in the history of the world. We got more stuff that storage facilities had to be invented because we got too much stuff and we're not going to let go of it for anything. So open storage is good for like RVs or campers or trailers or that third vehicle that you don't want to get rid of but don't want to sell and don't have a place to keep it. A lot of places have passed ordinances that say you can't park a boat in this neighborhood or in the county if you're in a residential area. Those are prime places to open up open storage facilities. What else? Buses, tractors. There's a whole lot of things people need to store that they just can't store at their house. They don't have enough room or it's not allowed by the city ordinance. The magic of open storage is It doesn't cost very much to produce an open storage facility. You know, you need an electronic gate, you need a fence around the property, and that's all you really need. Beyond that, you might have a mobile home or a small living quarters, so there's some form of security or some eyes on the property at least, but really, that's all there is to it. There's not a lot of expense to get into this business. The cost of the land, cost of the fence, cost of an electronic gate, maybe electronic, maybe not, and then maybe a little living quarters for somebody. That's it, you're in business. I personally have an open storage facility in Flower Bluff, Texas. Now it has 100 spaces. I charge about $65 a space. It's 2.3 acres that has a a chain link fence around it, an electronic gate, and a double wide three bedroom, two bath mobile home on it where I let someone live for free just so there's some potential eyes on the property. Now I paid $230,000 for this property that brings in $6,500 a month. That's $48,000 annual income. So we had a conversation about cap rate not too long ago. Let's plug in a cap rate for this. If you take my $230,000 cash price and you divide it by $48,000 worth of annual income, that's a 20.8% cap rate. And the maintenance on this thing is a little bit of nothing because it's really just raw land that people come and park their stuff on and pay me $65 a month to occupy a small parking space. And while we're on the topic of cap rate, I did a whole episode on cap rate. So if you wanna go to this link right here, it'll take you to that episode if you want to learn more about what a cap rate is and the formula to arrive at a cap rate. So now that I have your interest, you're probably thinking, where do these facilities work best? Well, they work best in highly populated areas where you can find a piece of property that's affordable that allows for this open parking or is zoned such that you can have open parking. Now, we would all love for this to be right in the middle of the Mecca. The problem is when you get right in the middle of the Mecca, probably the price per square foot of land is so much that it won't pan out. Formulas won't work. There's no room in it for you to make any money. So it's been my experience that you have to move a little bit towards the outskirts of the population. Still in the county, but not in the middle of the booming metropolis. Go someplace where there's bigger tracks, cheaper price per square foot for dirt or per acre. And then as you start to see the prices fall, you'll know that you're starting to get into the right area that you can do open parking and come out a winner at the end of the month cash flow wise. I will say this. The closer you are to the wealthier parts of town, the better off you are. Because wealthy people have more toys, wealthy people collect more stuff, and wealthy people tend to pay their bills consistently and for longer. Now before I get to that number one reason why real estate investors really use open storage, I want to ask you to hit that like button if you're enjoying these conversations, and to share it with your friends and family, please 
because it really helps us a lot. We could use all the help we can get, quite frankly, because it's a big world out there and no one knows we exist unless you share it with them. Also, please subscribe if you're not already. We have a lot of content coming over this next year. So the number one reason that real estate investors really use open storage is it's kind of just a default. They use open storage just to sit on land until the population or the demand moves towards it. It's a way of mitigating, if nothing else, just simply the taxes on the property. You know, so you can hold something and not have to pay out or hold something and even make a little bit per month. You know, when you've got this piece of property that's just a mile or two away from really being worth a lot of money, the city's growing towards it. The population is growing towards your property, but you still need to hold it for another two or three years. Would you rather hold it and just sit there and pay those taxes out of your pocket every year? Or would you rather put a fence around it, open up some open parking signs and say, hey, for 50 bucks, you can park here. And then 50, 60, 70 people come and all of a sudden you're making $3,000 a month while you're waiting for the population and the demand to get to you. And so the real number one reason that people do open storage is just to satisfy the wait time. It's just to be able to hold on until property values increase. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope that was a little nugget that you can put in your pocket and keep for the future. Maybe it's made you aware of some ways to hold some property that you otherwise might not have ventured into. If you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, I've been doing a weekly group coaching call, question and answer call for over five years. I've been helping people figure out different strategies, overcome their objections, overcome their limiting beliefs, and increase their overall income and cash flow for years. And I've helped hundreds of people do it. My main goal is to help people achieve their own financial freedom so that they can become who they're supposed to be. Now, whether you do that with my program or my strategies or someone else's, I don't care how you get there. I'm just trying to help you get there. I have ways to offer to get there, but if it's not for you, let's find some other way. And on this call is 40 or 50 people across the nation who are doing creative real estate investing. Not all of them are using the same strategy. In fact, it's almost impossible to get everyone to stay on one strategy subject for a long time. They're all doing all kinds of things, but somehow everything applies to the mindset of becoming financially free or wealthy. So if you think this call interests you, I'm offering you a free one hour in 45 minute recording of an actual call so you can see and hear and feel how these calls go. And I would love to invite you to be part of that call. Let's see if it's for you. Just click on the link below 1000houses.com, scroll up and down until you see recorded Q&A call. Click on that and it will be digitally downloaded and you'll be listening in minutes.